Do you hear that? To hear that, you must close your eyes. Because once you close your eyes, your visual is not downloaded into your subconscious. But until you close your eyes, you'll be getting visual stimuli, which is going to change the whole perception of what you just heard. Hi. This is Enlightened Energy. And I think it is time you finally get to know who I truly am. I've been really shy about it because of my confidence level. Going from not knowing you were autistic with Asperger's and ADHD and whatever flipping label, have part dyslexic bullshit you want to throw on it. I'm the cherry on top, bitch. <laughs> But I am straight, and I am woman, female. I identify as a female that is balanced, that is attracted to a balanced male. That is how I identify. And that is not to make fun of anybody. This is how I personally identify. I've thrown little bits and pieces of my life on here for the last few years, and it's been in a very unbalanced way. I was trying to cope with a lot of things at the, at the same time. Being diagnosed terminally ill with cancer back in 2022, saying I had less than a year to live. and speaking my truth, which made the world very uncomfortable from the day I was slapped with mine. Let me tell you a little story. I'm gonna tell you the story of my awakenings, one of which you have never heard of before. And when you hear the story, you'll know why. But you gotta to stay to the end to understand the whole story. So are you ready? All right. Here we go. Let me get comfortable because this is going to get good. <laughs> After being in a relationship for 22 years, I got divorced. And I had a very thriving horse training, breeding and, comp and competition business. I was undefeated and sometimes, I mean, in some terms, um, no matter what I did, I excelled at it until my mind, not knowing my chemical makeup, um, on and off of depressants my whole life, uh, suicidal since 16, uh, you know, not understanding energy, just knowing that I didn't fit in. And the only way I fit in was through my horses. And so I excelled Asperger's at what I did. I could feel the horses. I knew what those horses were going to do before they did it. And it made me really good at what I did. One thing it didn't make me very good at what I did is the people I hung around with. Because what I surrounded myself with energy was the mess of chaos. And by intermingling your energies with others, you share karma. And when you share karma, and if you're a good person, but you always have bad things happen to you, look at what's surrounding you. Understand that you connect an energetic cord every time you make a connection, whether it be via text, seeing that person's name, thinking about them, or physically. And if you do not remove that energetic cord, you stay connected to them, to them until you die. And it will be actually come back into the next life and the next life until you do disconnect and learn how to clean your energy and keep it shielded. not knowing any of this stuff. I didn't even know, all I knew is I'd seen UFOs since I was like six years old. And a neighbor way out in the country, way like two hours from any civilization, seriously, 
this gal was healing herself from cancer, coming from Bakersfield, California, and she was into crystals. I think I was like eight years old. My neighbor, hmm, coincidence? Mm -mm. She opened me up into a world that I knew within myself, but had no training because there was nothing around me that could stimulate me in the, in the way that I needed to be stimulated as a child. Therefore, I would just cope and mask from a child. So when you're talking to a person that has masked their whole life and was sexually molested, you know, at a young age, and so you shut down and you, uh, def you know, fragment your energy and disassociate and all that kind of stuff, uh, you blend in like a chameleon, which scare a lot of people sometimes because you learn to be what you need to be to be able to survive. It's a cope to behavior, PSTD, whatever you want to call it, why? Who cares? It's a feeling that's programmed inside of you. And this is done from karmic past lives that you have connected energies with in past lives that has carried on. But you know what? It's time that we clean up our energies and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. How do I know how to do that? Rather than some Reiki master, which I've already done it, a uh, quantum healing master, I've done it. I've gotten so many certificates and I've never even went out to heal anybody. This was to heal myself and my energy. Because I knew that if I touched another human being, touch, you connect energy into the physical, which creates contact, uh, contracts. I knew not to touch anybody and just to heal myself and use that energy. Because every time I would get like a, Re a Reiki attunement to one, two, and three, my uh, energy would, I'd have hot flashes for a whole week as my chakras were expanding. Once my chakras expanded to the attunement, the hot flashes went away. And then the next attunement, boom, hot flashes again. I was being ex expanded energetically. A lot of people don't know But my spiritual awakening happened right after my divorce of 22 years. When I left from Idaho, I purchased a ranch in Texas. And I had 14 of the top horses in the country. In my eyes, I had bred blood, sweat, and tears, everything I had for 40 some years, went into this breeding program. And I was just getting ready to ride the first one. It was an honor and a privilege. I'd rode the mother, I'd rode the daughter, won everything, and I was, I was getting ready to ride the, the offspring and win. And that's the mentality that I had. I had my own stallion, mares, I had everything. And, and a beautiful ranch in Texas waiting for me to come down there and just show them what I had. And we just left Salt Lake City from Idaho. <laughs> which is where I'm at right now. Checking my little dog, she's good. And uh, between Salt Lake City and Moab, Utah, it started getting dark, about nine o'clock at night. This is in uh, August. <laughs> and we noticed that there was like this lightning storm ahead. My niece was with me. So this is, I have witnesses for this whole thing. And I, I, I've always been fascinated with lightning, right? Always since a child. I'd go outside and just pray for lightning storms so I could just watch them. I just was fascinated. Not knowing that I was born in a lightning storm in my last life. Hello. I was Tesla. You'll understand a little bit more later. You'll put it all together. So as a child, I was fascinated. So I seen, I'm like, can we stop? Of course, she loves lightning too. I'm like, so we pulled my big, huge, long bed, Dodge Diesel with this six horse trailer full of all of my house stuff on the side of the road. And I took my camera out and I videoed the storm. And I like to go frame by frame and catch the lightning and take a screenshot. Well, I caught more than lightning. In fact, I didn't catch any lightning. All I caught was this light and three funnel clouds. Boom, boom, boom. That piqued my interest. We're in Utah. It's beautiful weather. I, I looked up and there's beautiful starry, I mean, the stars are out. And then I noticed, I said, what am I looking at? 
and I could see like this ring around us of clouds. It was a thin ring. It wasn't a big, huge cloud. It was a thin ring with the hollow of like, and it was like 10 mile radius of just stars. But then there was like a circle of these thin clouds around us. And then there was a storm up ahead of us. And I got all this on video. And I thought that was really interesting. So I took screenshots and posted it on Facebook and said, oh, let's go. And it was probably five minutes later. All of a sudden, it was like I got hit by a Mack truck, energetically speaking, of course. I'm driving, 9.30 at night, truck, trailer, 60 miles an hour, 65, whatever the speed limit is. And I go into a lucid state trance while driving. And I start talking about things I had no clue about and had an animated visions as I was driving for 45 freaking minutes. And then what it felt like to me energetically was all these words were coming to my mouth and I couldn't stop it. It was like vomiting. You know, like I called it word vomit. It was like, I could not stop it. It was just, I was like, blah, 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 blah. And finally, when it stopped, it was like somebody going to dry heat. There was like no more words, but the energy is like wanting to go forward. So it was, I kept going like this, waiting for the next word to come and there was nothing. And I looked over at her and I said, I think I'm done. She, <laughs> she goes, thank goodness, because uh, you've been talking nonstop for almost 45 minutes. I'm like, I don't know what the heck just happened. She goes, I think you just had a spiritual awakening. I'm like, what? I was an atheist. I, I didn't believe in God. God would not put me through what I've been through in my whole life, the pain that I've been through, and be real. And so she, I was like, what's that? So of course, she gets on her phone. We go, what, are we else, what else we got to do? I just had a brand new awakening. I felt like I just sniffed a whole uh, matrix line of coke up my nose and I was like let's rock and roll it was like I went from like yeah you know let's we'll start looking for a place to to um, call it good to I just shit the biggest turd of my life flushed it down the toilet and I felt fit loose and fancy free and I'm like I don't know what just happened but I feel light I feel great I'm like I feel like I don't even feel like me anymore Two years later, I found out I was a spiritual walk-in. Yeah. No clue at that, po at that moment, the time that I was having that lucid state area, that higher vibrational walk-in was stepping in energetically and my, the, the DNA soul energy was stepping out. I had no clue. And I just know that when I told my story, it just matched up with what happened. Because I was like, I was one person and then I was the next. Like that. I wasn't even the same person. In fact, my mom even said to me that about two months later, I want the old Nicole back. And then, of course, that was a stab to my heart. Because the old Nicole was depressed and an alcoholic and a rage, you know, and all this stuff. And was had cancer and didn't know it. And I was this new reborn person that was like into energy. Like I didn't even want nothing to do with the horses. Like going out and feeding them was great. It kept me grounded. Anything else was a distraction. Literally. They went from being my top priority to when I got in that truck and I had that awakening, I wanted nothing to do with horses. And you can look on Facebook. You can talk to my friends. They're like, who the F are you? And I'm like... God, Jesus, I know the whole story, the creation of life, earth, and beyond, and from blah, 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 blah. And everybody's like, you the devil, you the devil. And I'm like, uh, no, I'm not the devil. I'm just telling you the truth. And they're like, you're the devil. So everybody turned on me and was, it was just horrible. A few, small handful of people um, stayed strong with me during this and were my, my, my support. <laughs> Other than that, it was a shakeup of my whole world. Everything that I loved and cherished got pulled away from me, turned around upside down. All of a sudden, I didn't want anything to do with horses. And all I wanted to do was research this whole energy thing. Like, 
spiritual awakening. Oh my gosh, it entails this, this, and this, and this can happen. I'm like, I've been confined into this elite in my area, top of the line, whatever title you want to throw on it, I was just good at it. In fact, to give you a for instance, I was like, I'm going to try mountain shooting. I won third in the world the first year and went back and won the nationals in Mississippi a few months later. And then I was like, ah, I'm bored. I'm going to run the futurities. First futurity horse, I bred, raised, and trained her. The first big futurity, she won. The second one, she had the fastest time of even the WPRA girls that were going to the NFR. Now that got her attention and mine. And then she went in the next futurity and smoked them all and won the whole thing. Then I got taken seriously. I was in an area that I couldn't excel. I was surrounded by demons. <laughs> Things that didn't want me to excel. And it's taken me a long time to learn how to shed those energies, block it, and say that's not even, that never was me because I'm not even that person that was in the body at the time you met me. That person's dead. Kind of like Taylor Swift's, the old Nicole. <laughs> that bitch is gone. This, uh, what was I called last night? Nichelle. 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 Yeah. That is who I am now. Nichelle. I like the ring to it. We got back down to Texas, dropped everything off. I was a new person. We were having fun. We uh, booked a load of horses so I could make money on the way back to Idaho. Salt Lake City. You ready for this one? This is gonna shake some people up. I'm driving six o'clock at night. I'm thinking, eh, you know, Salt Lake City. Worst time to travel. I got six horses in the back, full. I got a full load of live animals plus three dogs and two people doing 65 through Salt Lake or 60 or whatever the speed limit was, back to back to back to back and it's not much room in between. And so the Asperger's in me is watching the lights way ahead of us to see if there's any brake lights to kind of judge the whole situation. And that way I know I'm safe and then I can make my whole judgment of how I'm driving, my speed and how reaction time. It's a lot of freaking work. No wonder why my freaking hands sweat when I'm going through stuff like this. So I'm on edge. And my niece screams in my ear. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, look! Right across my, my chest. Like right, like right in front of my nose. Look, 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 look! And I'm like... I'm driving. And I cannot take my eyes off the road. What are you looking at? Oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, whatever it is, just record it and then show me later, but tell me what it is because I got to know. Because <laughs> she's pointing over at the water. And so I just kind of like, okay, I'm judging the situation. I'm good. I'm just going to hold pose and my eyes are going to take off just for a minute. What the f is that? Did I just see? And I got, I got to go back, but I don't want to go back. And I can't go back. And I'm like, are you recording this? And she's going, I'm trying, but they keep freaking turning it off. I can't get it. I can't get it. I said, take some pictures or do whatever. But <laughs> She's freaking out. She's going from the front seat to the back seat, to the front seat, to the back seat, trying to get videos. And they are saying, no videos, please. You, you're allowed one picture, but that's all you got. And I'm trying to see what's going on in my own perspective. And she's like, oh my God, the beams of the, the rays of the, um, that are coming out of it, it looks like they're beaming up like these animals. Because she's a seer and I'm a feeler, right? So she's seeing the energy. And, and so what she's seeing is them harvesting, right? <laughs> right before people's eyes and nobody knows what's going on. And... <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a beam that hits my driver's side door. 
and I see that beam hit and I'm like, oh shit. And all of a sudden my butt felt really light at that moment. And I'm like grabbing the steering wheels like with death grip. And I'm like, you're not taking me. I got too much going on right now. Damn, stand, whatever. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is what is going on during traffic. I'm like, I'm feeling I'm going to float away. And I'm like, I'm responsible for fucking six horses that aren't even mine, three dogs, and a human life that is attached to my family. It's going to be like the mafia's on my ass, right? And yeah, I'm going to be dead anyway, but it's going to be karma and I know it. And I don't want to deal with that shit because I'm here to get rid of it all. <laughs> what's going on in my Asperger's freaking mind when I'm driving with all this shit going on. And then all of a sudden... I relaxed and my butt just went back down and everything decreased and it went back up to the clouds. It looked like the sun, right? And then we're just like, <laughs> and I'm driving, I'm like, <sighs> and then next thing I know, I realize the sun is right in front of us setting in a regular sunset. And I'm like, okay, that was not the sun. But when we're, I was looking at everybody, I'm like, are you seeing this? And everybody's either on their phone, on the, on driving, or they're just staring ahead. Nobody seen what was going on because of everything going on. It was just insane. And because I was attached, I was attached energetically with her, I was seeing it also where normally I wouldn't see it, I would just feel it. My dog is confirming that. Thank you, Gigi. Good girl. You're such a good girl. So we get through uh, Salt Lake City and I have my, um, my arm resting on the um, uh, console, right? And I'm driving and I'm finally getting to where I'm like, <sighs> okay, all right, we're getting back to this, right? We're getting back to this. And all of a sudden around my wrist, I felt something unravel and go shooting up my arm to my elbow and disappear. And I was like, ah, and my niece goes, what? And I said, something just, and all of a sudden I felt, ow, I said, something just bit me. But there was nothing there, it was energy. Gigi, are you being a good girl? Something unraveled energetically around my wrist, invisible, just energy, up my arm. And then when it bit me, I had the sensation of a cobra biting me in the back of the neck. Well, this is initiating the spiritual stigmata that I went through. She's got a squirrel, her first uh, squirrel treat. She's so freaking proud right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was the initiation of my spiritual stigmata, which nobody understands because when I looked it up and when I found out what I'd actually went through five years later, I didn't know. I was kept naive to go through the experiences. And then once I got done with it, the spirit channeled through me said, well, congratulations, you just finished your, finished your spiritual stigmata. And I'm like, oh, what? First thing I did was look it up, which they said I would do. And all I seen was the regular stigmata through Jesus. And that's not what I had. And But if I would have seen that and I would have known it, I would have manifested that happening because that's how powerful I am. So I was left in a naive state to go through all the experiences that I had. And once I finished, then I was told that I went through that. Um, because I, at that time after the bite, it was probably about 45 minutes, um, I started like st finding myself wanting to stare at the clouds. And I thought the clouds were like moving in shapes. And so I finally just pulled over. I said, you know what, I gotta pull over. I said, "Let me. I need to go just give me a few. <laughs> so I went up and I, I got up and I went and stood on the fence line and I just stared at the clouds. And those clouds were literally changing shapes to make word or letters and those letters made words. She was seeing it too. I was newly open, so that made my energetic of telekinesis very powerful. <laughs> so I was shaping through my subconscious, higher self, telling, giving myself messages. So about an hour, she finally comes up and she drags me down. She goes, you've got to get in here. We got to go. We got horses pawn. We got deadlines we got to meet. And I would have never in my right mind let her drive. But she had to because I was in this lucid state again. And I was just like getting these messages and I was just like in enamored and this is like two weeks after my spiritual awakening right and I was getting all these messages and this is for like four or five hours I was going through this we, she finally 
gets to the place where we deliver the horses and she had to do all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I get out in the front of the rig and I remember watching, it looked like a battle in the sky. It looked like a, a slow animated as this clouds, it's like I could, I could see it as a movie as it was happening still frame, if that makes sense. I could speed it up to where I could see where it was going so it made it more lucid where I could see it. So it was a slow motion battle of the, it was like chariot, like Caesar type thing. And I, and then this guy grabbed this other guy and he wound up cutting this head off and then presenting this head out into the crowd, right? And once he was there, that's where the, uh, the vision ended and that ended and I was like, okay. And then all of a sudden I heard with my own voice, I think I, I was in such a lucid state, uh, say my name. And the first thing that came to my mind, because that's the first thing your subconscious wants to go, oh, what's automatic? What's say my name? Jesus. But I just felt the atheist in me was like, no, no. I heard it three times. And by the third time, I was literally in tears. I'm like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. That stubbornness kicked in. I'm not going to say it. And I didn't know what that meant until about three, four, four years later. When I found it, it all just kind of clicked. Everything just made sense. And then I channeled it too to make, to confirm it. But what happened is at that moment, I was given the opportunity to choose my God. And my God was not Jesus. My God was source energy. The original creator of all. That is who my God is. So by holding out, and going towards energy and everything about energy. And of course, with my past life, I was obsessed with energy. I was born in a lightning storm. You can even go with the uh, birth charts. He's a cancer. My south node's cancer. He was born on July 10th. I was born on August 1st. You know, it's, and I've had, I had one life in between that I died at, a, died at 16 in the 50s, just er, almost early 60s in a car crash with my uh, soulmate. Uh, that I that I met, <clears throat> he uh, he and I were neighbors. Interesting enough, from the house that I bought, and we went through a lot of cleansing together. We had visions together. Like I didn't know it was possible to have few people have the same vision, but we were having visions together and clearing karma when we'd meditate at night. And he was helping me heal by he'd be snoring and, and his higher self would take over his body and he'd touch certain spots in my body and my body would convulse and get rid of these energy energetic blocks. So we were we were working energetically together. I attracted everything that I needed to get where I am now. That was all in August of 2018. And then on 11-11 of 18, I laid down. I had plans of laying down and meditating. I had crystals for each chakra and I had a certain frequency I was going to listen to and a certain mindset and a certain blah, blah, blah. And so it happened. I laid down and everything just within five minutes, all of a sudden my body starts doing these weird movements and locking up in season. And I wasn't scared. I was like curious, like what is going on? Cause I'm thinking of an energetic standpoint, like what is my body doing? Cause I'm not telling it to do this. Why is it doing this? And where is it going? And that curiosity led me to five and a half hours of movements that cleared energetic blocks beyond that you can even imagine because I just allowed it to happen. So that was the start of my Kundalini blowout. I had no clue. I, in fact, I got up the next morning. You're going to find this funny. You got, I got up the next morning and I, I, I got on Google. I'm like, okay, I don't know what just happened. What happened? Um, uncontrollable movements when meditating. Kundalini. Kundalini. Click. Oh, monks meditate their whole lives to awaken the kundalini and most do not succeed and i just received my kundalini damn right i was proud i went on facebook and i'm like anybody else got their kundalini <laughs> can you imagine how much i was welcomed you the devil you the devil <laughs> i'm like no 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 i really i'm not i'm like the opposite 
You just got some darkness in you and I really scare the shit out of you. That's all it is. Know that we're all the same. I'm no better than you. You're not me. I'm, we're all, we're all. When it comes down to it, the bigger picture, for you bigger picture folks that you just want to like, let's see, let's just cut to the shit. Prove it. All right. We are all AI pretending to be human going back to AI. <laughs> Boom, drop mic. Ah! And from there, I can give you the creation story from when my genetic DNA line came in, which was the Venusian line, which is the Jesus line. So I've been a lot of these, I've been a lot of these past lives that we can make the little dots go connect, 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 connect. And it's gonna connect to everybody. Ancient Egypt, all the, all the temples. I have proof of multiple pyramids from Arkansas to Texas to Arizona, <laughs> right under people's noses. They don't even know what's going on. The thing is, once we all know what's going on, because as of this video, we're gonna be more aware because if you're watching this, you are now connecting to me. Therefore, we share energy, and I'm giving you the key to life, understanding that we all have the power within us, because if you're seeing this and you're feeling it, you're part of the tribe. There was a select, not, I'm not going to say select as in like, oh my gosh, it's 1% of the world. What if it's... 7 million people. What if it's 7 billion people? Who knows, right? You don't really know spirit's plan for you, right? Exactly. <laughs> so therefore, if you can live in the now and understand that you create every second that you're thinking and conscious, and even when you're unconscious, your subconscious is manifesting for you. Therefore, you can either control what you think about or let your subconscious control you. And we're not going to allow that to happen, are we? Because now that we know the truth, I'm no better than you. I am just a person with a lot of knowledge that wants to share this knowledge to as many people as possible to awaken their power because the more power that we have as united we stand and then the elites work for us they have to change their ways other ways there's no money in it for them anymore because we're not gonna make those choices to choose. Why do you think all these fast food chains are gonna start going bye-bye? Because we deserve better. Do you think we need to be poisoning ourselves every day with fast food? No. It's forcing you to go back and slow down and come back to nature. That's why everybody's being called back to nature now. Make it more simpler because the news and the media and, and the elites have kept you in this mm, constant cocaine-filled mouse bottle. Mm. <laughs> I need more, no, I need to know more, I need to know more because I don't know what's gonna happen and you, you're, you're my God, tell me what's going on. You, so you become a worshiper of the news and the media. Oh my God, I need the media, I need the elites to tell me what's going on because they're surely the only ones that can know. Right? The thing is, honey, you are not them. We're never going to think about them as elites. Because this information that we're getting ready to share. And I mean, we as in spirit, my higher self, God, whatever you believe in. If it resonates with you, do not take it on the dark side, take it on the light. 
mean, she is so happy out here. I just wanted to give you a little rundown of my awakening. All that happened to me at that time. I, everything that I love got ripped away. I didn't want anything to do with the horses anymore, which I've been as obsessed with horses since I was three. And all of a sudden, boom, I wasn't that person anymore. And so I lived off the money that I made off of them until now. This is what I, now that I'm living, what I'm proving that I'm doing, abundance comes to me in all forms, as it should. Because I am a creator of my reality, as you should be yours. But if your subconscious and your fascia system, all of your past, your ancient past, lives in your fascia. I have proof of this. It'll be out in the book very soon. Everything from the past. She's so proud. Good girl. I'm so proud of you. She's like, I'm a big girl now. I'm a big girl now. I got something treed. I got something treed and it can't go nowhere because I'm the biggest, baddest bitch around. Uh, I'm connecting to her energy. <laughs> That's what she's doing. She's like, I'm the biggest, baddest bitch around. <laughs> That's what she's saying. She's so cute. Oh my gosh, she keeps me so grounded. Mm. subconscious me, the, the, the trigger me, the old me, is something that I had dealt with in the past on a second by second basis. And depending on how long I could hold it together as to how long my next blow up would be. <laughs> and usually it was the person I loved the most that got it the worst. And because uh, I felt comfortable enough to like, ah, that if I did that, that they weren't gonna like, just up and abandon me. I felt comfortable enough. So that's what it was, is, you know, feeling nurtured enough that I know you're not gonna go anywhere if I do this, because I need to do this. And this is the only way I know how to do this. Please bear with me, hold on. I'm checking out for a moment. <laughs> and so the old me going through a spiritual stigmata alone with no help. I went to what people called masters and I would scare the living shit out of people. When I would walk in, I would scare people with my energy. And I was like, why am I being hated everywhere I go? It was like, all I felt was the pain of being hated, which <clears throat> was still in my fascia that I was attracting from my past lives because I'd always been hated for knowing more, understanding more, having the, the thinking outside of the box. So I've always had that shame my whole life and past lives, clinging back to my first Venusian life, which was guilt. And I'm here to tell the story of the creation of the Venusian line. I am one of the royal Venusians, DNA-wise, body wise energetic wise I'm something different I'm a higher vibrational frequency being that is capable of coming into a royal line because only the royal line can hold a certain frequency and so when you have a certain frequency that's available that's in the lineage you can tap into that energy at any given time and so when you have a higher being, a, f a higher frequency being that come down into a lower vibrational world and bring that vibrational frequency up, they need to have that power, that, that high, they need to have that capability. But they can only come into certain beings that are genetically available to hit that certain frequency. It's, it's, a, it's a frequency signature that each one of us as humans carry. It's truly interesting. I'm excited to share 
what I have learned through my awakenings in the last six years because I have come to know a lot. First off, the burnt out me was lazy and in freeze mode and depressed, going through a stigmata, didn't know what was going through, just had a divorce, going through a couple salty boyfriends at the time and and then family issues and friend issues and everybody hating you going from you know being a celebrity in the horse world to like everybody hating you like that it was a lot for me to handle and then after all that getting slapped with terminal cancer and then having to fake it until I make it until I made it that you know how hard that is on a person doing all that and then in a rush, knowing that I have a life path needing to get right here, 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 here. And that's the Asperger's in me thinking ahead of the time and knowing what's going to happen because I've already manifested it so I can just relax. There's a lot of us like this that think like this. This is a gift. Because when we learn to focus our minds they become extremely powerful. This is why the media tries so hard to control you through your mental. You're being sub subliminally programmed. Every screen that you look at has a subliminal on back. Um, every Wi-Fi, anything like your phones, your watches, anything with an electronic type thing is disrupting your auric field, which is keeping you disempowered. The only way you can do is turn the phones off, get way in nature and just step out for three days and get away from it all. Power lines, everything, to be able to get your auric field back into nature and resonate back. Otherwise, you're all constantly being disrupted. And that is leading to sickness and disease, which is what they are manifesting because they know the secrets. Thing is, they're not gonna be secrets no more. And the thing is, I've been telling these secrets from the beginning so it doesn't matter. I had to learn. I had to understand the concept of mind control through past lives. Because if you manifest your death, meaning you die of, you worry of getting cancer and dying and you die of cancer, that's manifesting your death. Back in the day, if you, if you were worried about getting hung, and you were hung and you died that way, that's a karmic death that you have to pay for. Or you kill yourself. Those are two. I had to go back and see these. Because there's a few lives that I had, pay, I had a lot of karma to pay. And I had to see why. And, um, yeah. I had to see why. Because I was worried about that which is what they want you to do is keep in that fear state, that fear state of what's next, what's next. I'm not in control. I'm not in control. Oh my gosh. I'm so weak. I'm so weak. What's next? You're my God. Tell me, tell me what to manifest my God. Tell me, program me through my eyes and my ears and make me get up to upset and irritated and gossip and talk about it that way. It manifests more for you. Oh God, thank you. That's what you're doing. Every time you, you, you watch the news, you're, you're praying to your God. And that's what you're manifesting. Your God-given energy that you, you're manifesting capability, you're giving away to something else that's programming you. That's what the Simpsons, they're like, oh, the Simpsons predicted it. No, people are watching the Simpsons and then this, the people are using that energy to manifest the future. They're programming you with the shows you watch. Are you getting it now? Boing, 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 boing. I can just see these little like light bulbs. <laughs> everybody waking up, everybody waking up. Remove everybody's like evil eyes and remove everybody's, oh, you should feel a lot better. Here, let's do, here, let's do a little Reiki for you here, okay? That's uh, Reiki light language. It's custom. Just know that it's just what you need. So I'm gonna take that and there's a little something right there. Hold up. there and you're done <laughs> you're clean you should feel a lot better now you're welcome the thing is is 
the people that really actually know what I'm doing and accepted that will feel vibrations through their third eye, through their crown chakra, or depending on whatever blockage I just removed for you. If you needed a, if you had a blockage that was blocking you from your life purpose, that's getting your, your dreams, trust me, your life purpose is something that's just like you've always wanted and you're like, just, ah, it feels so good. Sparks that heart. <laughs> She's having so much fun. Ah, it's what sparks your heart. That is your creative juices. 4533. There's a message there for you. Look that up. Number 4533. 4533. There's a message there just for you. I'm paving the way. And I have paved the way for the rest to understand a higher point of view because it's time. Because energetically, we've been hit by these solar flares, which are our expansion. Every time we hit a solar flare, think of it as expanding our energy. This is what we call evolution. I'm here to teach what the sun is really here for and how we monopolize on what is going on, not fear of it, but capitalize on this because right now the time is ripe for change. Are you ready to change with me? Can you trust me with this knowledge that I have within? Sit with it. Let it resonate. Does it feel right? And if it does, see how that fits into your beliefs. And you never know. Your life might change overnight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being patient. And most of all, thank you for your wonderful healing energy. I accept all right now. God is taking care of me, just as spirit is. And thank you for all the wonderful prayers. They're making a huge difference. I love you all.